Hmm. So under solid state, the first concept is to understand the classification of solids. Okay. So we don't need to talk much about the basics of solid because we know it is a form of matter which is rigid, which has definite shape, definite volume, right? Molecules are not free to move. In solid, the particles cannot move, but what can they do? They can vibrate at their fixed positions. So solids can be classified into two categories. One is the crystalline. The other one is the amorphous. Can you just tell me one one example of each form in the chat box? In the chat box, can you tell? So crystalline form, crystalline is structured, amorphous as irregular, correct, sorry. correct. So crystalline solid means it has, as you said, regularly or regular ordered arrangement. Like, you know, sodium chloride, you might have known about diamond, all of these, which have a proper regular certain kind of arrangement, we call them as crystal, crystalline type of solids, okay? And also you can tell that it, it, all the particles there or the atoms or the constituents of particular solids, they're arranged in a definite geometrical pattern in a 3D space, basically. Okay? Yeah. Good, good, Adyasha. So the amorphous solid means what? Whose constituent particles, they don't have any regular or any orderly arrangement. Like, you know, glass. Glass looks like a super cooled uh, liquid. So glass doesn't have an order. If you break a glass, you, there's no even breakage. You know, there's plastic, someone said polymers, rubber, starch, proteins. All of them fall under the amorphous solids. They don't have any regularity. Also, maybe here and there, short range of like regularity is possible, but there's no longer range of regularities, right? So let us just do uh, write the differences slowly. So the internal arrangement of particles is regular. It is regular. That means they have definite uh, geometry. Okay. What about the amorphous form? the internal and arrangement of particles is irregular. Means same. They do not have definite geometry. They do not have definite geometry. This is the basic thing. So we have to understand the differences deeply because in, in the uh, competitive exams, you have to apply all these rules, right? And you know, they have sharper melting points, sharp melting points, obviously the reverse of it. They do not have sharp melting points. Okay. Third, there is regularity in the external shape. External form when crystals are formed. 
there is no regularity. The external form. Please let me know once you're done uh, copying this. Can I clear the screen? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Done, ma'am. All of you done, right? So let's continue. Crystalline amorphous forms. We wrote three differences. The fourth one is crystalline solids. They give you a regular cut. That means, you know, every smaller piece that you cut, it, it has some dimension. When you cut, crystalline solids give a regular cut. When? When cut by knife. Amorphous. They give you irregular cut. They give you an irregular cut. Next is, they have a characteristic heat of fusion. Characteristic means everything, every specific solid has its own, uh, uh, you know, heat of fusion values. That's what they mean. And they do not have characteristic. They do not have. You continue writing it. Write that. Okay, so they do, they do not have characteristic heat of fusion for amorphous. What about it? Uh, crystalline solids. Let me read they are. So they are rigid. And their shape is not distorted is not distorted by mild distorting forces. Whereas amorphous solids are not very rigid. These can be distorted. These can be distorted by any bending forces or any compressed forces. 
they can disturb. Only one more point is left after this. Can I clear the fourth point so that I'll fill that? I'm sure all of you might have completed the fourth one. Yes. I'm clearing that. I'm using another color for differentiation. Last one is very important. If you have a need, they might directly ask you which of them are anisotropic or crystalline solids are and isotropic. What does this mean? That means physical properties such as refractive index, conductivity, thermal expansion, they are all different in different directions. They are all different in different directions because of the orderly arrangement that happens because of the orderly arrangement. Different directions. This is due to the orderly arrangement of the particles. This, whatever notes I'm giving, uh, is purely for J, completely for both me, JE. I mean, the levels include for book level till JE advanced. So in detail, we learn the same for the amorphous here. Amorphous solids, why do you write that? Sorry, amorphous. Okay, they are isotropic. This means that various physical properties, various physical properties are same in all directions. They are same in all directions. Why? Because of random arrangement of particles. This is, that's all about the differences. If you are done, let me know. Done, ma'am. Good. So, I also, amorphous substance, if you observe, they are referred as sometimes super cooled liquids. They are also called as super cool liquids because they possess disorderly arrangement like liquids. You know that glasses and all are the examples.
there so super cool liquids is done so what do we use like what, what are the uses of these amorphous uh, solids and these amorphous solids as i said you know examples are glass different plastics and all you know they are used in different things also amorphous so many uses constructions uh, housewares laboratory equipment everything is made up of glass and plastic right so amorphous silica is the best material for converting it's an interesting fact converting sunlight into electricity sunlight into electricity that's it that's it you, i don't need to talk about the crystalline substances uses because we know diamonds uses we know sodium chloride uses everything Can I clear? Can I clear? Yes, ma'am. So we have to understand what does a crystal lattice mean? First, crystal lattice. so all crystals no crystals actually have regularly repeating atoms that means for example you have a cube na like this so to to this cube there is an again other cube which is attached so there is a regular arrangement of same thing it is repeating okay so it has a lattice all crystals generally have regularly repeating atoms molecules or ions okay which are the basic units of any cell okay so let me say uh, write the definition crystal lattice is also called as space lattice because these crystals are all we observe generally in the 3d arrangement so what is the definition regular three dimensional arrangement of identical points in space or you can also say that an array an array of points showing how molecules atoms or ions are arranged at different sites in 3d space also if i can show the diagram as i said if i say this is a unit cell every point here which i will mark with blue is called a lattice point okay very important point to understand each lattice point it has the same env environment or environment as that of any other point in the lattice if you actually club sim see similarly this cube draw one bottom one beside anywhere if you see every point will have like same number of same environment same kind of environment so 
the constituent particles of a lattice the constituent particles they have always been they have always they are represented by a lattice point they are represented by a lattice point irrespective of number of irrespective of whether it contains a single atom or more than one atom if you can clear we are done to, we are done talking about the space lattice Just let me know if you're done. It's done now. Everyone else is done, right? So you might have seen uh, so many cubes together, na? We'll understand basic terminologies first in solid state. That is unit set. unit cell this is the smallest repeating unit as i said in this space lattice when repeated over and over again results in a crystal of the given substance as i said see if you have substance if you actually have a bigger cube like this okay in this na there are so many more cubes each of it na so many more cubes so uh, this one thing is the unit cell For example, let me draw. As assume it's a two D wall of crystal lattice, no? So many similar exact shape, so many are there, front to back, everywhere. Only the single thing is called a unit cell. All of this is called a crystal lattice. This is called crystal lattice. This is called a single unit cell. A single unit cell. A single unit cell. Okay. so it is the smallest repeating so many are repeating na so the smallest repeating unit or you also can say it is a 3d group of lattice points lattice points that generates the whole lattice on repetition okay this much is only about a unit cell can i clear ma yes ma Bravis lattices. Bravis lattices. Okay, so he's a Bravis lattice in eighteen forty eight. No, he's a French crystallographer. He actually showed from geometrical point of view that there are only fourteen ways in which similar points means. any similar point can be arranged only in 14 different ways 
that too specifically in a 3D uh, dimension. Okay, so the total number of space lattices belonging to seven basic crystal systems together is 14. So let us understand each of them, okay? I'll tell you. Let us understand the types of unit cell. You all are very clear that if you have a cube, so many cubes are like this joint, but the single cube is called the unit cell. You all know that these are the lattice points, okay? These two are already clear. This is clear. Now, in the types of unit cell, first one is simple unit cell. What is it? It's a simple unit cell. What is this? Something is called as a simple unit cell. Yes, yes dear? Nothing. Huh. They are called a simple unit cell when when you have na, when the lattice points are only at the corners, when the lattice points are only at the corners, you call it as a simple unit cell, or you can call it as a primitive unit cell, or you can call it as a basic unit cell. Okay, simple, primitive, basic means what? If if you have them only in the corners, as I have drawn, these are only the corners. What are the corners? So this one is the corner, this one is the corner, this is the corner, corner, corner. So this is called a simple unit cell that we just have discussed. Let me talk about something called face-centered cubic lattice which is called as face-centered cubic lattice. FCC is called face-centered cubic lattice. So what happens here? So face-centered cubic lattice, what happened now? Huh? Here, the lattice points are at the center of each face of the cube or of the unit cell as well as at the corners. Understand that the same unit cell that I have drawn as simple will also be included, that is corners have to be there. And what are the faces now? Imagine you have a cube, okay? This is a face, this is a face, this is a face, the bottom is the face, the front is the face, the back is the face. Just imagine, take a dice if you have, or take a watch box, anything which is square, take it. Look at the faces, top one, bottom one, left one, right one, front one, back one. That means, how many lattice points are there now? Actually, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, eight corners here, okay? You have six faces plus eight corner. All these lattice points are involved under face center. Can I clear the screen? Shall I wait for a minute? Shall I wait? I'll wait for a minute because I just copied. Let me know if I should wait or go ahead. Is it is it a difficult question? Body centered cubic lattice. I want all of you to be a bit active now because it's a new chapter now. Body centered cubic lattice. What is this? In this, what happens? 
the lattice points are at the center of the body as well as corners. You anyways know what are corners. This is the unit cell. You have the lattice points. And what is the center of it? You can see clearly that there is only one center. So, yeah, so th there's one center. For anything, there's only one center now. How many centers will a cube have in body center? One only or two? One only? Normally, you know, normal question. In body center, cubic lattice. You only have one, okay? So you have corners and you will have only one, one center. So that means what ma? Seven, eight corners and one body center. One, one B is one body center. Face center, I said already six faces and things now. So these are the, are the three types of unit cells we just discussed. Okay, next. Can I clear? So these are the three types of unit cells, ma. Good. So these are three types of unit cells. But as I said, there are 14 types. Four, seven types of arrangements are possible. Let me tell you what. If at all, if at all, the crystals will be in different shape, right? Okay. These are the axial distances. These are the angles between them. I'll show you. The possible unit types of unit cells. Oh, sorry. I forgot to tell about the end center. So, so three, three types we discussed. We also have another type of unit cell called end centered unit cell end center unit cell what is this this is something which is actually possible for specific things like orthorhombic and monoclinic i'll show you what each of them are don't worry monoclinic crystal types so what happens here now in the end center, there are three lattice points. Three lattice points in the face centers of only one set of opposite faces. In addition to, everywhere if you see, in addition to the lattice points, at the corners of the unit cell. Every, in BCC, HCC, everywhere we have definitely included the corners. Right? These are the four types. So if you have a crystal a lattice on the XY axis, and if you have for example, a cube form like this. Okay. So what will happen now? This is your y-axis, x-axis, z-axis. This will be your angle beta. This will be, this one will be your angle alpha. Okay. And this will be your angle gamma. You will understand why I wrote for angles. These are the actual angles. Gamma. Beta, alpha and gamma.
Yeah, anyways, I have drawn now. So, can I clear now? If you're all done. In just a minute. Okay. Good. So let me uh, show you the table. You will have crystal class, axial distances, angles, possible type of unit cells and the examples of this, whatever we are doing. So in the crystal class, basically in a cube now, the axial distances uh, will be equal and also the angles will be equal. The types which are possible will be primitive, that is the basic type. Then you have body centered and also face centered. Copper metal, Potassium chloride, sodium chloride, zinc blend, which is a, a law, uh, ore, and diamond, all of them fall under this crystal class. Those are uh, tetragonal. I'll show you uh, an image of these. Your alpha, beta, gamma is 90. You have primitive, you have body centered, tin oxide, titanium oxide fall under this. Orthorhombic. Again, it's primitive. Body centered, face centered. I also said it is end centered for orthorhombic in specific. We have the example of rhombic sulfur and potassium nitrate. I can also show you pictures first. But then if, I, if you write down, then show you pictures, you might relate better. Hexagonal. Hexagonal. Your alpha and beta is 90. Your gamma is 120. Only primitive is possible. It's graphite, zinc oxide, magnesium metal. Magnesium metal. Please copy. I think I can slowly clear the first part. Can I? I'm sure. So next you Okay, I'm also clearing the second one, assuming you have copied. Trigonal by uh, rhombohedral. We have only two more, okay? Monoclinic.
So the next one also I'm clearing, which is the last, which we have to, is the dry cleaning. A is not equal to B, not equal to C. Alpha not equal to beta, not equal to gamma, not equal to 90. This is primitive potassium dichromate and copper sulfate. Actually, the all structures I'll not be able to, you know, draw it. I only I can show who is entering the class. Yeah. Let me know if you have done copying yet. Can I clear the screen, ma'am, of you? No. Okay. So after this, I'll actually show you how all of these look like because I cannot draw. Maybe you can just relate, okay? Later, let us actually, we understood terms and we have to start calculating um, the number of particles per unit cell. And we have so much fun. It's a lot of calculations. Um, okay. So I'm ending the session for now. I will continue with Oh, in the next class by showing you the pictures. I, I, I'll always remember that. Thank you. Sorry to end the five minutes before. I have some work, so I need to go. Thank you all. Good night.